Hello lovely girls from a very gorgeous day in Cape Town. I am still here. I know that in my previous What I Eat In A Day video I was in Cape Town and I haven't yet left. Um, and I'm using this wonderful time to film some fun content for you girls. And I was actually listening to a podcast in the last week and they were talking about calorie tracking and they were having a conversation around was it good, was it bad, um, how do you do it without it being like a huge pain in the bum? Because obviously we all have busy lives, we all have a lot going on. And it definitely is like an extra thing to add to the list, right? Even if you've been doing it for a long time. And for a lot of us who have been doing it for a while, I think that it's really normal to have periods of time where you're like, I actually just don't have the capacity to do this. And I actually don't know if I want to track anymore. And then we all know that we go back to tracking because it is firstly so effective in getting results. And secondly, it actually offers us so much food freedom. Whereas if you're not sure how much you've eaten that day, if you are used to tracking, you're not like, oh, am I able to fit something else in? Am I able to eat more? And very often we tend to underestimate how much we actually eating. So I wanted to do a video along these lines, along this topic. And I wanted to share with you five or six things, I'm not sure how many I have on my list, it's six things that I wanted to share with you to help make tracking a hell of a lot easier. So I have been tracking pretty consistently for, I would say, four or five years. So I have a fantastic intuition when it comes to calories and macros and the different foods that I eat. I eat very similar foods all the time. So if I had to go off the top of my head, I could very easily go without tracking, but I still enjoy the process. Um, and if done correctly, it really shouldn't be as big a task as sometimes we make out it to be. So I hope that these couple of tips are gonna help you. Let's get straight into them. And I think the first one um, is, is more around mindset of tracking. And I think that if you start looking at tracking as a fantastic tool and something that actually enables you to optimize your nutrition, instead of this extra task that I have to do, um, this is what I've seen in so many of the women that have done my programs where they have cut out foods for so long. They haven't had bread. They haven't had pasta for like, some of them were like, I haven't had pasta for six years. Like, how am I eating pasta and losing weight all of a sudden? Um, and so there is a massive amount of freedom and flexibility that comes with tracking your calories. Otherwise, it is quite easy to slip back into creating these rules for ourselves on what we should be eating and what we shouldn't be eating in an attempt to still stay within our calories without tracking them. So often it can become quite restrictive. So I guess rule number one is keep the mindset of that tracking is really a positive thing. And for a lot of people, I won't say everybody, for some people it could be negative if you have eating disorder history or something like that. But for a lot of people, it is really empowering, firstly, to understand food in that way, and secondly, to offer us that freedom to say, whatever it is that we want, if we can fit it into our calories and macros, we are golden and we can enjoy it absolutely guilt-free. So keep that mindset. It is a great thing, it is a positive tool, and it gives us that flexibility and freedom. Okay, so let's get into some more practical um, tips when it comes to making calorie and macro tracking a little bit easier. So one thing I always do is on a Sunday, I plan out my meals for the week. I use my, my tool, which is the Lean Girl Kitchen Coach, and I plan out, I've got an um, e-template, so you can fill it in online if you're a digital girl, or like me, I still love to write things out. I print out my meal plan for the week, and then I write in what it is that I'm going to have. And the calories and macros are already calculated there for me, which is fantastic. And it takes all the guesswork out of it and stops you from having to track each and every item. And they're also loaded in my fitness pile, by the way. So you can just search those recipes if you use the same ingredients. 
Um, so what I find about meal planning, even if you don't use the kitchen coach, um, and you have a certain set of go-to meals that you have every single week, this is going to help you massively because there is a tool in my fitness pal that you can save different items as a meal or as a recipe. And these items can already be loaded in there. And so once you've said, cool, I'm gonna have spaghetti bolognese on Mondays, on Tuesdays, I'm gonna have burgers, on Wednesdays, I'm gonna have this. Those meals, if we have them on repeat from week in and week out, which you're gonna have seven different meals for each one, um, it actually helps so much to actually have a meal plan so that you're not starting every single day figuring out what is it that I'm going to eat and just taking more decisions out of it because you've already pre-made all of those decisions and it will also help a ton with your grocery list and your grocery shopping to make sure that you have the, all the right ingredients, make sure that you're not left on a whim without any um, other foods that you're wanting to eat. So tip number two is to plan your meals and your week in advance. So this means you are not just adding a whole bunch of random things to your MyFitnessPal every day. You have already got these big meals planned out. This brings me to point number two, which I kind of touched on, uh, point number three, which I kind of touched on, which was to eat some of the same meals every single day. So I often will have the same breakfast every day. I am a total oats obsessed woman and as much as i try and have different breakfasts like i'm like let me do eggs and salmon on toast which i do often if i'll eat out for breakfast but otherwise i tend to have oats every single day my oats with my protein powder and my peanut butter and whatever other crunchy goods you have to have crunch something crunchy on, on the oats um, and i tend to stick to that which means every day i can just log in the same thing and i'm not having to think, oh, every day, what is it that I'm going to have? The same goes for lunches and dinners. You can have a few core meals that you have on repeat for that week. And again, if you are tracking the same items, you can just either copy and paste that meal into the next day, or you can pre-save them as meals. Most of us enjoy similar foods all the time. It's not like every day you have to be creating this new, completely lavish meal. If you enjoy something, I'm quite bad at this. I eat it on repeat, but that is also a great way to be able to limit the amount of new tracking and finding of new items. Okay, and tip number four sort of leans in with tip number three, and that is to keep your meals super simple. So when you are using a thousand ingredients that you have to log in MyFitnessPal, it can be a serious ball egg. So you're like this ingredient and this ingredient and your meal ends up being this big. So the more simple you keep your meals with the fewer ingredients as possible, um, I think the better because yeah, you're just not having to in enter like a million different things unless you do, do want to do it at one time and create a recipe in my fitness pal, which I also have a video on, by the way, on my YouTube channel if you want a little tutorial on how to do that. It's really simple. And so tip number four, keep your meals simple with as few ingredients as possible. Tip number five, when it comes to making tracking and calorie tracking and macro tracking easier, is to set yourself some meal budgets. So although we know we have our entire day budget, what I also have is I have meal budgets. So this way, even if you are not tracking on MyFitnessPal and you know you have a broad idea on all the calories in different foods, Say you're gonna be going out for breakfast and you know that your breakfast calorie budget is 500. You can very easily do a rough calculation in your head to say, cool, that means I can have a slice of toast, I can have two eggs, I can have some salmon, I can have some grilled mushrooms and maybe some spinach on the side and that will total up 500 calories. But when you're like, oh, let me go out for breakfast now, but let me see uh, what is it that I can track? What is it that I should, should I just eat as little as possible? Or am I now gonna blow my entire budget if I eat this and then only track it afterwards? So having a, a meal budget in your mind also helps you to make easier decisions on the go. And now I am so thrilled to see many restaurants are also including their nutritional information on their website. So Kauai, New, Mug and Bean, which is scary. Don't look at that one. Literally don't go to Mug and Bean unless you want like a 900 calorie muffin for breakfast. Um, but a lot of the places also have their nutritional info on the menu. And again, you can just then say, cool, my budget's 500 calories. This is the option that I'm gonna go for.
And then the next tip that I wanted to share was around having bigger, more satiating meals instead of having 10 small meals a day or a lot of snacks. I was just telling Gilan, no more snacks. I love snacks. He loves a snack. Because this is just another time that you have to log into my fitness pal and you have to track all of these small little items now i had four jelly beans now i had two pieces of mango now i had the it just makes everything so much more complex and it just takes up so much more time so if you follow this structure so you know your calorie budget for the day you break it down into meal goals you plan your meals in advance so that you know how many uh, what you're going to be eating at those meals then you stick to that schedule. You're not having to make a thousand choices throughout the day. Should I eat now? Shouldn't I eat now? Should I have a big meal? Should I have a small meal? The plan is there and you are essentially daily just following the plan. And if you plan really well and you are not eating outside of that plan, you can get away with not tracking at all as long as you stick to your meal plan to the T. So I'm not a huge fan of meal plans because most people just hand them out like smarties when it's not according to your own calories and macros, according to your own goals, your own preferences, your own eating schedule, which is why I don't like them. However, if you are building your own meal plan, I am totally all for that. And again, use something, use a tool that has already figured out what meals are delicious, like the Lean Girl Kitchen Coach, or head onto Pinterest and say 500 calorie meals that are high in protein, and I guarantee you, you are going to have endless, endless ideas. And then one last little tip that I find makes tracking much easier is to create a meal with all of the small goodies that you have every day. So say you always have an almond cappuccino, you always have your pre-gym drink, you always have one little piece of dark chocolate, Create a meal on my fitness pal and add all of those items in so that you don't have to singly add them every time. You can just name that daily snacks. We're not snacking, but um, daily items. And then you can just at one go add all of those items into my fitness pal, which is also another great little hack that I use daily instead of having to add item by item. So I hope that those couple of tips are going to revive your passion for tracking macros. If you felt like it was just getting too much for you, it was too much of a headache. I hope that you're gonna start planning your meals in. I hope that you're gonna set those meal budgets Keep your meals simple, stick to bigger meals, less snacking, use the MyFitnessPal tools as well to your advantage, so the meal and recipe guides. Um, and remember that in your mindset, tracking is epic. It makes us enjoy or makes us be able to enjoy all of our favorite foods as long as we can fit it into that budget. So I hope that you found this helpful. Give this video a thumbs up if you did. Um, show some love to the channel and also hit your comments down below or any questions. I reply to all of them um, on the channel and I, I'm sure the next video you see will be my last one here in Cape Town. I'm just here for a little while, which will be a recipe video. So if you haven't subscribed, yet another reason to subscribe to the channel so you do not miss it. We are gonna be doing a little veggie series because I know some of you struggle with your veggies to make them taste really good and I am the queen of vegetables. It's, it's really like the favorite part of my meal. So I'm gonna hit you up with some delicious local veggie options and so you don't wanna miss that one. Check you guys in the next video, bye.